Hey, so glad you can join us again today. Whoa, we are back in the triple zone, and you know this is where I like to be today in the hot seat. Brand new, I mean brand spanking new from Tespin. This thing is so new, it's like still hot. The Tespin TMM 569A for your cheapo pleasure. And a big shout out to Tespin. Thanks so much for sending it in for this review. You guys rock. <laughs> My lucky day. Hey, we got a brand new Tesman. That is awesome. Now, not only is it awesome, I think this meter is going to surprise you because, man, oh, man, they're packing a lot under that little hood. As always, top-notch quality packaging from Tesman. You get a really good solid box, so when you get your meter, it's not going to get damaged in shipping. And, wow, it's a good-looking box, too. Shows you exactly what you're getting. And you're getting a fantastic case as well. Look at that nice carrying case. I mean, how can you fault a multimeter that has a case? Impossible. Nice zipper, heavy duty. We have a couple of straps. Of course, we get the test leads and a thermocouple in here. Um, but yeah, good travel carry case is always a bonus. Speaking of bonuses, check this out. Look at that manual. Yeah, it's in a few different languages. Well, Six to be exact, um, but man, oh man, nice attention to detail here. Not some crappy piece of paper. Now you're actually getting a real manual with the specs, uh, some little how-tos, the whole nine yards, what the meter's about. Good job. And of course, you're getting that wonderful meter. Oh yeah, you've got that nice green going on. I do like that forest green. Really stands out on the bench. Uh, very soothing color. Not only that, but you get a nice boot as well. That rubberized boot does come off, but extra protection because you know, when you drop these things without that rubber boot, uh, you don't know what's gonna happen, believe me. Never a good thing to drop a meter without a boot. Uh, that's what my grandfather used to say. But that being said, very nicely packaged, good looking meter. Now this to me is what a multimeter should look like. It has that, you know, old school charm, but still that modern, I don't know what, uh, all together, just a really nice package. As I mentioned, you do get that uh, thermal couple as well. Just your average thermal couple, but a thermal couple nonetheless. Good thing though, good news, this does have a passive temperature probe on it. So you don't need to use the thermal couple if you just want to check the ambient temperature. If you want to test hot and cold, what have you, well then sure, go ahead. But not required for basic temperature. And of course, we get these test lights, leads. I can get them out there. Oh, they are nice, large in the hand. You know, I always prefer a larger style test lead myself. And these are pretty decent. I mean, they're, they're pretty big. Um, I like it. We have that nice finger grip as well. The protection over here. Take off the cap. Lose a cap, but get a little bit more uh, real estate when you're probing that PCB. Altogether, very nice test lead. Maximum 10 amps. And uh, I got to say, nice. Now it's not silicone, it's your PVC, but that being said, still good quality and fairly thick gauge as well. And the shroud is fairly long, so when you stick it inside that meter, it's definitely in there, nice and snug. And look at that, powered by three AAA batteries. Take it off with one Phillips screw, and look at that, we have nice brass insert over here. Excellent. Three AAA batteries. Now they do ship with the Duracells. Not a big fan of Duracells, but at least they ship with AAA batteries. Um, and that is obviously nice. Oh, standing tall and proud. Look at that tilt stand. Tessman did a great job with this tilt stand. It is firm. It's not flapping around. No, it goes up, it goes down, and it stays up or it stays down. No messing around. Something else, you know, this is called attention to detail. We have a little groove inlay here, and that is awesome because let's say uh, you're, you've got your probes in the back and those little probe holders. You know, like that. That's what they're for, right? Those probe holders. Well, sit your meter down. Sometimes those probe holders can get in the way, but look at that with that little, that little wedge see like that see it can it can go under the tilt stand so you know just everything just works really well well thought out 
Also, it doesn't come with a magnetic backing, but at least you have this hanging capability right here. So if you want to stick it on a nail or stick it somewhere, you can. You can. Awesome. Now, if we go ahead and compare it to a Fluke size-wise, it's just a tiny bit smaller. So it's, it's a good size meter um, compared to that 118E over here. It's actually thicker than the 118, but pretty well the same size. Overall, a decent size multimeter. Lots of functionalities here, starting off with the off position on the far left. Volts, AC-DC, millivolts, frequency up to 10 megahertz, diode and continuity, resistance and capacitance, dual temperature, Celsius and Fahrenheit, phase sequence detection, microamps, milliamps, high current amps, up to 10 amps, AC-DC. Finally, non-contact voltage, and live wire. Top of the meter starting on the far left, we have our function button. In the middle, we have the hold, followed by the rail. Finally, we have our flashlight as well as the backlight. For inputs at the bottom on the far left, we have the high current 10 amp. Below that, we have the milliamp. Far right, we have our positive input. And below that, we have our common or ground. Top of the meter, we have both non-contact voltage as well as that flashlight. You know, I love a good rotary selector switch and check this out. Oh my God, fantastic. One of the best selectors I've come across in a long time. Now there's no way to get rid of the audible beep. Unfortunately, that would have been a bonus, but man, this thing is smooth as butter. Will not get lost between ranges and it clicks with authority. All in all, this is just a great selector and they've painted the dial. Good job. That bold display is 4,000 counts, which would have been 6,000. It's 4,000 is what it is, but man, it is a nice looking display. And look at the bar graph on the top. That is always a bonus. We'll, we'll test the speed of that bar graph, but I mean, check it out. A nice analog bar graph on your digital multimeter. Hey, it gets even better. Let's turn on that backlight. Nice, nice backlight. No bleeding whatsoever. Uh, just a gorgeous, gorgeous illuminated display, which stays on. That's right. It stays on, doesn't turn off, stays on until you decide to turn it off or turn off the meter. Now, when you do turn off the meter, if you leave the backlight on, you'll have to turn it back on again because, you know, it, it just turns off. You know what I mean? Anyway. <sighs> And if you're looking for the latest safety ratings, you're not going to find them here. No, we have nothing about that CE, which who knows what that's for. Ugh. Okay, enough of me talking. Let's take a look at what this meter can actually do. All right, here we go. Starting off with LED diodes, light emitting diodes. Here we go. Starting off with that red LED. Ooh, lit with a forward voltage drop. And look at that. Look at the bar. Look at the bar. Over to the green, yes, lit, and that forward voltage drop over to the yellow. Three for three. Are we going to make four? Oh, the light is lit, but we do not see a forward voltage drop. Finally, the blue, and it is lit. So five out of five in terms of illumination, three out of five in terms of a forward voltage drop. And by the way, with regular diodes, not a problem. Now, we don't get that audible beep. Oh, that is just way too bad. Maximum output in diode mode is a balmy 2.6 volts. Already next up, continuity using the stock default test probes. And we are in continuity. Three, two, one, here we go. Oh yeah, latched, fairly loud. And look at that, look at that visual. Oh! Beauty, let's try the Pro Masters. Pro Masters. Even slightly quicker to latch. Just as loud. Looking good. Seventy-eight dBA maximum output in continuity. Right now we're in DC amps. Ten amps is the max that the testman can take. Let's bring it up a little bit now, shall we? Four amps. Five. Almost six. 
6.97 according to the power supply 6.97 on the testament spot on 8.89 and 9.97 amps look at 9.99 coming up on the testament let's just take it over shall we and we are over and we have that high current alert All right, now we're looking at the five volt DC precision voltage. Look at that Fluke 45, 5.000, spot on Mr. Fluke. And for the test one, we're coming in at 5.01, definitely in spec, good job. Now, according to Tesman, this is also true RMS, so we should be coming in around 4.99 volts here on the DMM Check Plus. And yes, there you go. Quick look now at resistance sitting at 1 meg, 0.995 of, of an ohm, 3 mega ohm coming at 2.990, 6 mega ohm, finally 10 mega ohm. So fairly fast to range. Let's try 100k, 110k, 111k, 111.1k. Do we have any resistance on the test leads themselves? And yeah, we do have a tiny bit, but 0.2 of an ohm, so not too bad. So we wanna factor that in when we're doing these resistance measurements, 100 ohm precision resistor. So that would be about 100.1 ohm, hey, and that is perfecto. Onboard ambient sensor gives us dual temperature in both Celsius and Fahrenheit. Thought we'd have a closer look at that bar graph to see how uh, you know accurate it is. Sitting at 10 volts right now, and we're just gonna sort of go up and down a little bit from 10 to 20 volts. So, I mean, <laughs> Not the fastest, but you know what? It's still fairly fast and definitely accurate. A bit of a lag, but yeah, definitely usable. Okay, teardown time. Here we go. Now I'm pretty sure I blew that high current fuse. And yeah, I did. Got a little carried away there, but that's okay. We can replace that. Two ceramic fuses, six by 30 millimeter. That NCV was ho-hum so-so. Sometimes it was great, sometimes it just didn't work at all. We do have a filament here for the NCV that is jutting out, but uh, for whatever reason, just wasn't that great. There's our speaker piece, of course. Main CPU is cobbed. And over here, we have the TM1621B. And that, of course, is the display driver from Shenzhen Titan Microelectronics uh, LCD driver. And uh, yeah, there you go. By the way, just want to point out, we do have a little bit of flux going on here with that uh, NCV filament. I'm going to clean that off and I don't know, maybe it'll make a difference. Maybe not. Down to the lower portion of the board, uh, two PTCs on the voltage side of things. So not bad. Now we don't have a resist, uh, resistor. We don't have a current shunt. We do, however, have a current sensing resistor. So uh, your mileage may vary, but I do prefer to see good old fashioned current shunt. Of course, those input jacks are of the split variety. We see those more often than not in the cheapo zone. Let's take a look further. Here we are just a little bit further inside. Happy to report we do have some dielectric on those rotary selector tracks. So there is a little bit of grease there. That is good for long-term reliability. Once again, there's a good look at those inputs there. The split variety once again. And uh, lo and behold, HT-135A version one. So this is a rebranded Habotest HT-135A, just so you know. Um, there are the little ball bearings. Can you see that? One of them somewhere here. Where did it go? I gotta find it. But uh, there's ball, 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 ball bearings. Uh, the old spring variety. Hey, these ones last forever. There is the uh, rotary selector switch itself with those metal tracks, one, two, three, four, five in total. And yeah, good old school tech here. Alrighty, gonna put it back together, come back with my closing thoughts. Almost forgot there's the main LCD with the zebra strip there, Elastomar. 
Ah, that makes contact with the surface of the PCB for that display. Tons of functionality and has that oh-so-classic multimeter look. Love it. Don't even get me started about this always-on backlight. Man, oh man, that is the cat's meow. Love it. Stays on until you decide to turn it off. Bright, bold, clear, crisp display. Now, the only downside, of course, is the fact that it's 4,000 counts. Uh, but that being said, it is so easy to look at, I'll let that one pass on by. Honestly, I don't have anything negative to say about this meter. Nothing negative at all. That selector switch is oh so tactile. Great user feedback. One of the best I've come across in a long, long time. Quality-wise, seems to be excellent in the cheapo realm. I mean, this thing is built like a million bucks. It feels solid. Feels like it's a lot more meter than it is. Well, I mean, price-wise. Probably the only gripe is the fact that that NCB just is eh, not very good. Sometimes it's so spot on, other times the same location. It doesn't read a darn thing. Go figure. Anyway, long story short, this is a great meter. If NCV isn't absolutely critical, then it's pretty hard to pass this one by. The Tesman TMM569A gets a solid 3.5 out of five stars. Oh, I love that green just in time for Christmas. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Till the next one. Keep on testing.